Hi, yes, I'm in my new electric car. This is my first drive. I'm gonna drive it back to the lab from the dealer in Pennant Hills. So here we go. Oh goodness, I've only had a uh, test drive of this thing. So it's gonna be quite different to, uh, you know, do full driving in Sydney traffic. Oh, it's almost three o'clock, not quite peak hour yet, but oh, well, anyway, let's give it a go. So how do I do this? <laughs> uh, right, foot on brake. Press the drive button. This is the Hyundai Ionic Electric Elite, by the way, fully electric car. Um, I've done a video on my main channel. This is just my second channel. Uh, so let's go. All right, parking brake is off. Yes. All right. And we're off. Here we go. All right. Let's go. Going on to uh, Pennant Hills Road which is probably one of the worst roads in Sydney. It's beeping at me. What's it beeping at me for? <laughs> I don't know, it's beeping. Do I leave a door open? Yep, no, it's definitely beeping at me. I'm gonna get above a certain speed. What's going on? Hmm, it's interesting. All right, I think I figured out the beeping. Um, I think it was my heavy bag on the seat. So it thought that somebody was sitting there. I, I presume that's it. Um, so yeah, here we go. <laughs> anyway, this is it. I'm driving in. Just got to get through the service center here. I'm driving in uh, eco mode. It's got three modes, eco, normal and sport. And uh, I, I test drove it in eco mode and it was it was fine. It's got one of these flat bottom. I've never had one of these flat bottom steering wheels before. It's uh, it's rather interesting. So anyway, here we go. Oh, I heard the doors automatically lock. That's interesting. All right, let's go out here. Oh goodness, Pennant Hills Road doesn't get much worse. At least it's not peak hour, I guess could be worse now I'm looking at the uh, rear view looking out the rear view mirror here and um, it's got a split right in it's a hatchback with a gigantic split right in the middle but uh, luckily you can uh, put the oh, I won't do it now I have to get used to it but you can uh, put the rear camera on which uh, lets you look at um, which will get you a large field of view out the back so you don't have to rely on the split mirror and we're on Pennant Hills Road here we go <clears throat> uh, my mirrors are adjusted yep all right let's go oh, can I yeah we're surrounded by trucks and everything here Here we go, woohoo! My first electric, fully electric car. And it, uh, you know, it, it handles and drives just like a regular internal combustion car, except uh, the acceleration, but even on eco mode, it's like, it's, it's pretty good. Like, I'm not gonna complain about uh, the lack of oomph in it, but I'm not too fussy about that kind of stuff. I drove a 2014 uh, Toyota Corolla <laughs> and a the Mrs. E V Vlogs car is a the family car is a uh, Nissan Dualis Plus 2. It's a seven seat Dualis and that thing's pretty sluggish. Red oh the red camera I, I am not using the brake. I'm not using the brake. <laughs> I'm not using the brake and it's no oh, it's not going to fully stop me. I do have to use the brake. I was hoping to do a video where I could drive around Sydney actually just using the uh, regen because we've got the flappy paddles here that uh, can set the regen. Apparently, the left one, if you hold it um, on heart, like you know, hold it down, it'll put full regen and it'll let you come to a stop regardless of the mode you're in. So uh, you only have to you don't have to use the brakes much at all. So, school zone ahead. School zone ahead, thank you. And uh, yeah, 
it's it's interesting to have it well, to have the car brake when you're not when your foot isn't on the brake the regen it's um it's a different driving experience of course you can switch the regen off so it's no problem it's uh stuck behind a dumpster truck <laughs> ironically i'm behind a dumpster truck <laughs> One of those, you know, dialer dumpster things. I have no idea what the ping was. So there's a ping. Is that like a safety camera? Speed camera? Not sure what the deal is. Yeah, traffic's getting a bit heavy now. This is uh, this is classic Sydney. Classic Sydney traffic for you. I do not miss driving in Sydney traffic. This is why I deliberately bought my lab and office near the... Uh, near to home it's like walk I, I can walk to work if I want to but I usually ride the bike or it's just a couple of minutes in the car around the corner um, it's not far at all I basically don't have to uh, do any main road driving it's pretty great so yep it's got the new car smell and uh, it's I got the air con on uh, no yep uh, I might turn the air con off actually conserve the battery That'll just be chewing the battery. And this battery in the Hyundai Ionic is uh, liquid cooled, unlike the Leaf, which doesn't have any cooling. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I got it, is that uh, the battery should in theory last longer, although there's more mechanicals that can go wrong. You know, your liquid cooling thing could leak. Oh, my old Holden Vectra, oh, which is an Opal Vectra. Oh, that was atrocious. I'm not kidding when I say I had at least eight coolant system leaks in that. It just was not designed for Australian conditions. When I bought that car, um, it came with a battery warmer cover. It's like, yeah, we need to warm up our battery in Australia, sure. It's like, it's designed for like snow, countries that get snow. It's like, give me a break. It's Australia. Anyway, oh yeah, that regen. I'm not sure what regen mode I'm on. I still haven't memorized the cluster yet uh, so anyway oh there we go okay right off dirt dirt high okay right can't see this but it's got uh, just three levels three bars there that tell you so I'm on lightest region at the moment so I have to use the brake mostly Economical, it says 71%. Normal, 29%. I'm not sure what that is. Dynamic is zero. Driving, so my driving style is economic. I'm yes, so I'm driving 72% economical. That's pretty good. 28% normal. So I'm not driving dynamically. <laughs> well, it looks like I've picked the right lane here. Um, <laughs> you can't see the traffic. I'm just. This is Sydney. Yeah. I, wow. I'll never ever go back to driving somewhere for work again. Well, I don't have to I'll work for myself, you know. But yeah, I it's just no, 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 no. Lie, <sighs> lots of trucks out. Still following the dumpster. Sorry, you can't see it. Can't see out the front. You're only going to get a side view. I'm not even sure. You probably actually the sun's probably in the sensor. Sorry, it's the only way I can mount the camera for this drive home so yeah, I'm not doing much I'm just cr crawling along in peak hour tra not quite peak hour traffic behind a dumpster truck um, yeah <laughs> great so it's hardly my first hardly the best uh, first car driving experience but then again you're not gonna get much else in Sydney I, I had to get it from Pennant Hills. There's a Hyundai dealer at Castle Hill, but they don't sell the Ionic. They don't sell electric cars at all. They're not a what's called a Blue Drive dealer. Blue, Blue Drive is the electric drive technology or whatever. So uh, here we go. we'll get off this road in a minute. And uh, so yeah, they're not. Um, they don't sell them. I'm yet to know if I can actually get it serviced there. Whether or not they have every 12 months or 10,000 kilometres. Uh, 12 months, 10,000 kilometers. I probably won't do 10,000 kilometers in 12 months. So it'll be like 12 months, I'll get it serviced. Um, 
and we eventually turn on the Castle Hill Road here. Should get, mm, I don't know if it'll get better, but anyway, um, yep, this is the 2020. Didn't get that premium rubbish. This is this just the regular model. It was an extra like, I don't know, that's five, six thousand dollars for the premium model and you just get like heated seats Who the, what wanker wants heated seats really seriously and and you get like power seats i don't know I, I actually prefer the just the lever at the front that just pulls the seat back and forth i don't like the electric seat thing oh but it memorizes so you know if i get in or you know mrs e v blog gets in she's tiny um so yeah every time i got into my old car after she was driving uh my old car rip Rest in peace to the 2014 beat up Toyota Corolla, which I bought used, by the way. And uh, yep. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, she's she's tiny, so like I get in and my head bashes against the uh, roof, and I've got to uh, crank the seat down. And anyway, so yep. So if she drives this, which I'm sure she'll want to. Um, then yeah. We'll have to do that so but yeah i think it's just manually easy just to manually adjust it and yeah heated seats you get leather you know well fake leather seats or whatever it is these are uh, cloth ones i think they're um oh i don't know there's pros and cons to leather seats and things like that and um they're just other trim things and and stuff like that it's not it's not a huge amount of difference oh you do get a wireless uh phone uh charger thing in it you don't get the wireless phone charger in this um but it doesn't matter. Uh, my phone lasts for like, I rarely use my phone. Like it, it lasts, my phone lasts for like almost a week on a single battery. It lasts for like five days, but I charge it up like once a week. Something is crazy. So that's no big deal. Um, and I've got the, uh, I mean, I'm not sure what they call it, but it's the noise mode. Um, oh, my noise mode's turned on. So people around me, cause this is so silent. That oh, these fully electric cars are so silent that this one has a button right here that you can turn on and off the sound. So, you know, if you're driving like, uh, you know, at a school or something and, you know, there's like kids running, you know, there's all these people all around and, you you know, you don't want to sneak up on them in your one and a half ton electric car. So uh, I'm just um, sussing out the viewability. I think the viewability of this is probably better than my previous car anyway um you don't want to um yeah scare the people with your silent fully electric car so you can enable the sound mode and it makes a rumbling sound i'll try and get some video of that um so yep so that beeping was definitely the uh, bag on the front <laughs> front seat <laughs> oh there's there's the regen oh full regen braking oh but it won't let me come to a complete stop although this does have um thing where it will break for you it'll keep a set distance from the car in front and i'm yet to try that um so apparently you can program it to set a distance to stop with the car in front and i'm not sure if that combined with the regen braking will actually stop your car or not i'm yet to experiment with that but that'd be cool because i'd love to drive with effectively no brake if i put the um Actually, the next one, I'll try, the next stop, I'll try the flappy paddle. I'll use the flappy paddle. So. Uh, oh. New car smell, it's, it's not that. 60 kilometers per hour speed limit. 60 kilometers an hour speed limit. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, my, um. The voice in my old car was actually called Karen, the female voice, my uh, old GPS. I think it was a, uh, like a, a um, Garmin uh, GPS. I think her name actually was Karen. So, yep. Ding dong. That was, the, yeah, I think that's passing a speed camera, the ding dong. So, yeah. Apparently I get free map upgrades for every time I service it or something. So, they were way, there we go, eco. Oh yeah, okay, I can see the bar at the top. I just went into the, not the dynamic driving mode, I went into the orange from the green. So I assume that is the 25% normal, that's normal, normal mode. So I'm driving economically. So this car tells me, which is important for an electric car, I've got 300 kilometers range left. 
so it says. I assume that's you know based on my adaptive driving history of when I when I started it or something. Um, so there's a new metro station. That's uh, Cherry Brook Metro Station. Love the metro. Well, I haven't been on the metro since the COVID thing. Haven't been on. Love the metro. It's a big thing for Sydney, by the way. It's a big deal. Trust me. Out in the western suburbs here, we've been waiting 20 years for the metro. Okay, I'm going to use my flappy paddle. Flappy paddle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can feel it. Yep. It it did fully stop. It did fully stop my car. There you go. The fla I did not put my foot on the brake. The flappy paddle stopped it. Wow. That's great. So yeah, I might do a video like you know, like I'll set up a camera like down near my feet to like show you like dual view where I'm, uh, you know, if I can. You know, drive drive around Sydney without using my brake once. I think that'd be a cool video. Let me know in the comments down below if, if you think so. And I'll try and set that up. <clears throat> so, yep. Now I'm liking this the Hyundai Ionic 2020. It's brand. Uh, how many K's has it got in there? It hasn't it hasn't got an odometer. I don't know. It's got a. Oh no, tw no, 21 kilometres. There you go. No, it's uh, down in the bottom corner there. 21 kilometres on the clock. 21 k's on the clock. Great. And uh, yeah, I wasn't going to buy a fully electric car, but um, you know, some um, tax, various tax things um, convinced me that, and my accountant convinced me that I could do it. Oh, I wonder, this is one thing with, the thing with uh, regenerative braking though, especially aggressive regenerative braking, like it's not going to slam on the brakes, but does it turn on your brake light? So if I hold down that paddle, I, I need someone to actually view it from the back to see if it actually does work. Um, does that, if I don't you put my foot on the brake, does my brake light actually come on? I don't know. It's an interesting question. I assume it like like it would, otherwise that's like pretty dangerous. Um, I just instinctively use my brake there instead of the regen. Um, but I, I yeah, I'm only on level one regen at the moment, so it's not doing much. Or well, you can completely turn it off. So I wonder if it yeah, I wonder if it tells you that in the manual. Does it? Does it actually do that? That'd be interesting to find out. School zone ahead. School zone ahead. All right. <clears throat> yeah, right. 30, it doesn't feel like I'm going 30 kilometers an hour. Modern cars, you don't, like, you know, you're doing 110 k's an hour, right, which is the maximum speed here in Australia, except in uh, the Northern Territory. Uh, maybe other states where they have um, there are some roads that are unlimited speed they actually have a sign there that tell you it was an experiment and I, I believed it worked I, I believe it worked like you know like really straight stretches out in the outback um, there's unlimited speed roads on in Australia so that was actually you know I'm um, so that that's a pretty ballsy move by because you never see authorities increase speed limits once they drop them they'll never go back because no politician wants to hang their ass out on the line right and and say yeah let's increase because some speed limits are just ridiculous you know you got to, you'll have a dual carriageway and it'll be 50 k's an hour right because it's in an urban area and then you'll have some you know a back road which is you know windy sin just you know double lane back road um or single lane back road with you know it'll be a hundred and it'll be like and, and you're doing 80 around there and it's just it's like whoa i better slow down this is crazy how could you even get near the speed limit um yeah it's just it's nuts so oh i don't know yeah it's yeah this thing's got like like lane things so it will actually keep me in the lane or something uh it will do things like that it'll sense whether or not i'm falling asleep it'll you know, it's got like five different safety features or something. So, 
I can't rattle them all off here, but um, yep. So I, I kind of sort of felt it do something back there. That's that's what prompted me to, to say that. I kind of felt it like it had some sort of active control, but it may, maybe not, maybe not. A bit of regen there. Even on lowest regen, you can feel it. You can feel it doing the regen. Like I'm 50 meters away from the lights at the moment and I can feel I'm a foot off the uh, accelerator and I'm all right, so here we go. Now we're getting to a bit better dry, although there's another school zone coming up, which is, what's, what's the time? Oh, 12 past three, yeah, I'm gonna hit a school zone. <laughs> it's a really bad, so yeah, I, oh, did I have, oh. I don't know, I'm. Yep, yep, yep. I'm letting it deliberately go towards the line and it's steering me. Yep, and it beeped at me. Yep, it beeped at me and told me to put it back. Yep, so it must have act like lane guidance on. I knew I could feel that. Yeah, so that's that, that's interesting. It'll take some getting used to. I've never had a car that's had intelligent anything, you know. So, uh, the you know, most intelligent thing I've had in my uh, car is like, you know, a transistor radio. Listen to the trots. Um, so, oh no, you know, I've had like ABS brakes and stuff like that, which has, which has come on a few times, um, over, over the years, but every modern car, you know, it's like 30 year old technology, isn't it? And anti-lock brakes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, I've never had any active lane, anything, any, you know, any self, any uh, like safety features at all, really. Um, so... Yeah, that's interesting. I knew I could feel a little sort of nudge. Oh, it didn't do it that time. Didn't do it. I deliberately sort of went over the line there, or on near, or on the line, and it didn't. Hmm. It's interesting. This is why I'm, I, I've said it dozens of times before, and I'll say it again. Autonomous cars, yeah, they work, work, in quote marks. Um, but they will not be mainstream. Uh, they will not become mainstream for, I, I said like five years ago, it'd be 10, 15 years at least before they be actually become mainstream. And I'm, I'm, I'm still going by that. I'm, I'm still standing by that, I think. It's, it's just, oh, there's so many. Oh, it did full regen there. Even though it did, I, I didn't do the flat. I'm in one bar regen. I think that's what that's down. I think that's the regen bar. One bar regen. Hmm. Anyway. Oh no. School's school's alright. Everyone must be out. Ah, new car smell. Ahead. School zone ahead. Thank you, Karen. I think I'll call oh, I'll call it Karen. <clears throat> Excellent. It's, it's 40 k's, 40 k's an hour here in the school zones, and rightly so. You know, little kids darting out everywhere and stuff. So, uh, yep, and it's completely silent. Like, and there's no rumble. Like, there's no nothing. And it's a BCW system. That's what it is. That's the name of the uh, active sound thing that generates, you know, simulates an engine noise or whatever, or a idle noise of a car. Be interesting to see if I can pick that up on camera. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm liking the Ionic. It's really good. Feels like a normal car. Got to let this bus come out in front. If a bus, a bus have their lights, you've got to give way if they're blinking to get out. There's a sticker on the back of every bus that has give way to the bus if they've got their indicator light on. They've got a blinker, blinker as we call it here in Australia. Turn your blinker on your mug, you know, when somebody somebody doesn't use their blinker at the lights, you know. <laughs> yep. Might switch the aircon on. It's all touch, it's all touch buttons, all glass, 
glass capacitive sense touch button. Oh, oh, it's coming on fast. Don't know if I wanted that. It's a bit, yeah, I've got to like, <laughs> I really have to learn. Like it'll, it'll take weeks to get used to like every feature in this thing. And, but I've already discovered the active lane guidance or whatever it's called. So yeah. It, it, you know, it's quite noticeable. It's like I knew it was doing something. I feel a little tug and on the steering wheel. So it's doing that, doing that active steering. So it's all steer by wire and accelerate by wire and drive by wire. You know, all the, all right, the bus is gone. Accelerate in eco mode. Woo! Great stuff. Oh, there's the regen brake. Yeah, it went up to three bars on the regen braking, even though I didn't... Hmm, got to, got to figure this out. Oh, yeah, I can see the active lane guidance. It's got a little lane indicator there. Where's the view? There it is. I can get my rear view. Ah, there we go. Ooh, I can see all three cars. Oh, I can see the one that's probably just at the back of... Yeah, oh, just behind my tail. Yeah. Wow, you get a... Sorry, I can't move the camera and show you, but you get a really nice rear view actual actual objects and distances may appear different on the screen <laughs> i am assuming that's going to stay there permanently um yep thank you maybe there's a way to disable it we're off <clears throat> yeah because the um the the split screen i like I, I think it's fine um you'd get totally used to it you wouldn't even know it's there really it's yeah the had the rear window split into two it's uh, it, it, it's really, it's really interesting. I don't know why they've done that, but uh, anyway, I can probably, I can actually see more out the back than I could in my old uh, 2014 Corolla. So even with the split in the middle, but that rear view down on the head, down the display there. And the interesting thing is, is you got your, it's not a heads up display, but your instrument cluster in front of you um, has, will have a lot of, uh, so if you've got your navigation on, it will, um, as well as showing your nav screen there, it'll actually show it in front of you as well on the instrument cluster. So, uh, so you could have your, I think I'm, I'm probably going to, I like this rear view mode on, on here. I think I'm just going to leave that on all the time. Uh, because why not? It's, you know, I like being able to see a huge field of view behind me. That's, that's just really nice. I mean, it won't stop me turning my yeah I'm, I'm not someone who really relies on my mirrors i'm a head turner like i i will definitely like you know it's because some of the cars i've owned they you know the rear view mirrors haven't been that great or they've got you know like um you know various like uh, you know blind spot type issues and yeah i i pretty much turn my head to check when i'm changing lanes so Although sometimes you just, you know, you, you can just use your mirrors and it's fine. These mirrors seem... In 300 metres, okay. red oh, light probably and speed camera ahead, 60 kilometres per hour speed limit. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I wonder if I can change the voice. And, uh, no, these, um, these rear view mirrors seem, side mirrors seem better than, better than my old Corolla. So, yeah, I'm liking that display. That's good. Four kilometers an hour. It's all digital display on this thing. No dials anymore. And uh, I said goodbye to my old car. Not really, oh, it's got outside temperature, 29 degrees today. It's quite warm. It's just hit spring here. And, uh, and the thing is, I don't have to put my key in anymore. That's my key. So there you go. Um, Yep, it's just a uh, proximity thing. You press the button on the side and it, it opens up. You've got the prox key. I know that's, you know, doesn't every modern car have that? But, you know, I've, I've never had any of this newfangled stuff anymore. And there's a, there's a petrol gauge on there with a little charge plug on it. And I don't know what that is, really. I don't, uh, I still haven't worked out the instrument cluster. I haven't, you know, haven't read the manual. So I might have to RTFM, which I will do tonight because, uh, well, what's the time? Yeah, 3.30. Because uh, 
going to uh, take Sagan to soccer tonight. So that'll be the first uh, first thing. So I'll just, uh, while he's playing soccer, I think I'll just sit in here and <laughs> just fiddle with every single menu option and try and try and figure it out. So charge, power, and yeah, I'm not, okay, oh, right, okay, the bar, gra right, I see. Right, it's got the, yep, the bars will get less and less as I go. There's a lot of bars on there, what is it, 25, 30 bars or something? It's a lot. And uh, so, yeah, but it says I've got uh, 290 kilometers left. I guess that's always there. I don't know if you can change the look and feel of the cluster here. Uh, but you, you change different, I'm gonna, um, even though I'm not doing my drive mode, drive mode normal, changes to blue. It's green when you're in eco mode, obviously. Blue in normal and red. I've now got it in drive, sport mode. So, yeah, stuck in traffic in my drive sport mode. But this isn't the fastest car, the, like the fastest electric car. The, but this has better efficiency than the Leaf. It's another one of the reasons, many reasons why I bought it over the Leaf. Oh yeah, yeah, you can feel the difference in sport, yep. Yeah, you can feel the difference in sport mode. Just just the acceleration, but eco mode is fine. Like, I don't know um, why you would, you know, you wouldn't ordinarily just drive it in eco mode. You know, maybe if you're driving through the mountains or something like that, you know, you wanna drive it a bit sportier, have a bit more fun, but oh, I'll happily trade off range for, uh, um, oh, well, I'll happily trade off before, like, um, you know, acceleration performance for range. But anyway, yeah, the Leaf has better performance because it has, um, it uses more power. It uses more power per uh, per distance. So, you know, watts per kilometre or, or whatever the metric you want to use is. Um, watts per, yeah, it uses like 20, 25% more than this. So this has more range than the Leaf with a smaller battery pack. This is 37 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack. The Leaf is 40 and the Leaf gets less range because it's a higher performance car you know it's not a tesla but it's you know the leaf has snappier performance apparently um and i've uh, driven a leaf i haven't driven the new 2020 leaf um but anyway yeah so this is the 2020 model I ionic and it has a 100 kilowatt motor as opposed to like an 88 kilowatt motor or something i think in the 2019 model and the instrument heads up display is like you know 10 inches and stuff like that anyway uh we're coming into norwest business park so I will call it quits right there and thank you for joining me on my first drive home. It's now got 29 Ks on the clock. Oh no. Anyway, catch you next time.